topic we are we are on fur this. Ah, the topic we are starting today is a linear relationships. And linear relationships show up all the time in real world day to day settings. And I'm going to discuss them mathematically and as kind of real world objects. A linear relationship between two variables, X and Y, written as a formula, is a relationship that looks like this. Y equals MX plus B. And possibly the students in the hall are less interested in hearing my lecture than you are. So why don't I close that door? But what does this mean? Well, a relationship is linear. If there is a constant, rate of change. And a rate of change can be recognized by its units. A rate of change is something per something. So miles per hour, dollars per hour, miles per gallon, megabytes per second, something per something. So just briefly trying to get this nailed down. Let's say I walk home at a rate of three point one miles per hour. If X is the number of hours that I have walked and Y is the number of miles, the relationship between X and Y is linear and therefore must look like that must look like y equals mx plus b. And as for what this m and what this b are, we'll pass lightly for now. We'll just make the observation that this relationship has to be of this form. And it has to be of this form because miles per hour is a rate. And this 3.1 is constant. So we have a constant rate of change. And the relationship is linear. That's what a relation, linear relationship is. Similarly, if an hourly, or that is to say, part time worker earns 
if let me write this a little differently than a eraser. Come on, there we go. Let me write this as something per something. So instead of a dollar sign, let's write fifteen dollars per hour. What we have here is a rate of change, and it's a constant rate of change. It's a rate of change because of the something per something. And it's constant because of this 15, because the 15 is given and is a constant. And if x, is the number of hours this uh, person works. And Y is the number of dollars this person earns. There has to be a relationship of the form Y equals MX plus B. And what we'd like to do in this class period is get a handle on this M and on this B. Or at least we'd like to partially get a handle on them. So M is some constant and B is some constant. And even if you've never seen a linear relationship before, your intuition is probably telling you that this 15 probably should slot into this equation somewhere. So that's the first thing we are going to talk about. In a linear relationship, y equals mx plus b, we've got a constant rate of change, and that rate of change slots into this equation as M. There's a detail that I'm not talking about yet, but going back here, this M in this example is 15 because 15 is the rate of change. Here, slightly more complicated. This 3.1 slots in for M, but there's kind of a catch. And let's discuss that catch now, which is that M, can be a positive or negative. And that requires some thought because when people talk, you know, in day to day life, no, almost nobody uses or speaks in terms of negative rates of change. Nobody says I walked home at a rate of negative 3.1 miles per hour. So it's not immediately clear what a negative rate of change would mean or, or where it would show up in real world applications. And the answer is that as X increases, Y changes. 
In fact, y changes at a fixed rate. That's what a linear expression is. Well, there are two ways to change. Y could be increasing or Y could be a decreasing. And if Y is increasing, that's going to make this M positive. And if Y is decreasing, that's going to make this M negative. So let's look at a concrete example. Let's, let, um, let's look at this example. And maybe let's let's expand on this. I'm walking home. So I am somewhere other than home. And I've got my apartment and I am walking towards my apartment. And X is going to be the hours I spend walking, and let's make it very clear what Y is. Y is going to be the number of miles I am from my home. And this is a linear relationship, Y, equals mx plus b. Well, this 3.1 is our rate of change. So this 3.1 is going to slot into m with one caveat. As x increases, Y is decreasing in this example. As time passes, my miles from home is decreasing. And because of that, this M is not going to be a 3.1. It's going to be a negative 3.1. So the rate is always providing us with this constant M, but you have to look at the situation and decide for yourself whether the rate is positive or negative. Any questions about that or about this example? Here, you notice I just sort of slotted a positive 15 in as the number of hours worked increases, the money earned also increases. So we have a positive M in this example. What about that B? Yeah, we've talked about M. Now, I guess we should talk about B. B, well, mathematically speaking, B is the Y-intercept. 
that's maybe not a very enlightening way of thinking of B, though. Remember that most of the time, the y-intercept is best understood as an initial value. And let's go back to the two examples we have been looking at with this understanding of B in mind. So this example here, so you're an hourly worker. If you will work zero hours, you earn zero dollars. So at the start of the month or the fortnight or whatever your payment schedule is, initially, before you have done any work, you are earning nothing. You're earning zero dollars. And that is reflected by B being zero here. Initially, you earn nothing. Going back to this example, we don't have enough information on the board to say what to be is. Let's edit the problem. I'll walk home from work. And I'm going to say that I'm specifically walking home from work. So starting at Shadron State College, 0 0.68 miles away. Sorry, I know this is slightly cramped, but I hope it's uh, here. That's uh, that's some line there. So initially, before I have started walking, I am zero point sixty eight miles from home. And that initial value slots in to B. B is zero point sixty eight. Most of the time, this is the easiest way to understand B. Just What's y when x is zero? In the field of business, I, I should be asked, I mean, you, first of all, you can just raise your hand if you have questions. You don't have to wait for me to ask, but I should still be asking, does anybody have any questions about what I've just said? <coughs> In the field of business, B is often thought of as a fixed cause. Let's give an elementary example where we're working with business and money. Yeah. Let's say, that our cafeteria or the cafeteria people we hire are bulk ordering 
some spice. And let's say the spice costs four point thirteen dollars per So we recognize the situation as a linear, something per something, dollars per ounce. And this is a fixed rate, 4.13 dollars per ounce. Let's add some kind of shipping and handling fee to this. Let's, let's just say there is a fat $4.99 shipping and handling fee. Asking I mean, this is linear, first of all. I've made that observation. If X is the number of ounces and Y is the cost, then the relationship must be Y equals MX plus B, and this 4.13 is a rate. When the number of ounces increases, the cost also increases, so it's positive 4.13. And this B, is a fixed cost in the sense that if you order one ounce, you have to pay this shipping and handling, or if you order 10 ounces, you have to pay this shipping and handling. It's not changing with X. And it's useful in problems like this to think of B that way, because if you try to think of B as an initial value in this problem, it's slightly incoherent. How much shipping and handling do you have to pay if you order zero ounces? Well, if you order zero ounces, you're not facing an order. Talking about shipping and handling doesn't really make sense in that context. But if you think of B as a fat fee, that makes sense. No matter how big or small X is, there's this fat shipping and handling fee that you have to cover. But let's do some exam, um, some problems with this example. Let's copy this to the next board. Y towards 4.13x plus 4.99. And let's copy down the meaning of these variables. I can never, I can never convince students to do that step but it really cuts down on the common errors that I see with problems like this. The specific problem I am going to ask is if I order 12 ounces, 
of this spice, what does that cost? And the specific problem that I see a lot, I mean, just in my experience from teaching this class, most students can see this problem, they can see this 12, and they can say, okay, this 12 needs to get stuck into this equation somewhere. But there are two variables in this equation. There's a y variable and there's an x variable. And the most common error with problems like this is taking this 12 and sticking it into the wrong variable. And here's where it's really useful to have this information written down. 12 of ounces. Our variables are X and Y, and of those variables, X is measured in ounces. So this 12 has to be going in there. 12 is a number of ounces. 12 goes in for X. And then, It's just a matter of typing this into a calculator. But actually, I'm going to, uh, our calculator takes like a minute to load up. It's not ready. I am going to type this into Google rather than a calculator. 4.13 times 12 plus 4.99. And you see Google can do elementary math like that. So 54.55. Do not write on the whiteboard with a pen. That would be a bad day. And again, Y equals this. Y is the cost. So Y must be measured in dollars. 54.55 dollars. Let's do a second example, keeping up with this uh, ordering spices situation. Does anybody have any questions about this example? So um, the cost of the shipping handling would go like into B and then would go for the B in the um yeah yeah this in the equation that that's right this four point ninety nine is B okay here. and it, it would be like that in every equation or just for what we're doing right now uh well well B will B depends on the situation so like for what we're doing right now. B is this 4.99 shipping and handling. But I mean, for the, for this example here, B was a zero. Oh. So B depends on the specific problem that we're looking at. Oh, okay. Let's see, let's keep. Y equals 
x plus 4.99. Let's again record that x is the number of ounces and y is the cost of the 54.55 is a pretty significant expenditure on spices. Maybe you'd rather spend less than that. So question, if you only have Twenty dollars to spend on this spice. How many ounces can you afford? That's, this is maybe not the most realistic thing, but we'll assume we can order a fraction of an ounce from this company. Well, again, here's where taking the time to jot this down is going to stop you from making kind of elementary errors. Twenty dollars is a cost. So now this twenty once again gets stuck into this equation, just like this twelve did. But this twenty is going in for y now. And we have an equation that we must solve. We want to know what x is, we need to solve it. This is sort of prerequisite material, I guess, but we'll still, uh, we can take this slow. What would be a first step here for solving this equation? You subtract uh, 4.99 over to the other side. Thank you. So we've got addition. We want to get rid of that addition and you undo addition via subtract. And that gives you, let me see, 15.01 equals 4.99. How should I finish this problem out? It'll be 15.01 divided by 4.13. Yes, and thank, and thank you as well. Um, we have multiplication and we undo multiplication with the division. And once again, I'm just going to, I don't think if you're, anyone's watching this recording after the fact, I don't think they're going to be able to see this, but I'm just typing this division in and I'm getting 3.6 about. So, 3.6 equals x. 
and X is a number of ounces. So that's 3.6 ounces. There's other stuff we want to do with linear equations, like probably a lot of you have seen the old rise over run formula before, stuff like that. But that will be for another day. For now, we've covered what I wanted to cover today, and I'm going to get out the in class work slash homework.